Welcome back to Adventures of Lord Paramount Boris II of the Stormlands. As last episode, unfortunately, right at the end there, our father had a horrible accident involving a window, and now he is dead forever, because that's how that works. And now, as Lord Paramount Boris II, we are a little bit in a strange situation. We're a four-year-old boy. We've got the whole world ahead of us. We can be whatever we want to be if we put our mind to it. That being said, Bar Paramount Boris II has put his mind to it and has prepared us a nice little book to help uh, tell us, the audience, what he wants to do with his life. So welcome, everybody, to Little Baby Boris's big book of big brain plans. First things first, then, at the top, they're very straightforward independence. That's what we've always wanted from the start here. So, A, we can reform the religion, but B, so the Storm Kings can take their rightful throne as being kings. Right now, we're just Lord Paramount Boris II, which is not good enough. We need to take back that, that traditional crown stag that everybody said wasn't a crown stag, except it actually was, because it says on the wiki. So, we've got two ways of doing this. We've got a pincer attack-style tactic. Ideally, both would be the perfect situation. I think we're guaranteed independence if we get both of these working. But, you know, it, it's not, especially the dragon is, is not going to be too reliable, given that we've lost something like three dragon eggs over the course of this campaign. Anyway, more to the point. A, we've got, well, first, column one, column A, column B, page one, we've got dragon. And then under that, we've got Targaryen Secrets and Dragon Hall. So this is obviously going down the dragon route. We did start uh, the... the What's the word for it? The refurbishment of Summer Hall? We've started to rebuild it. We've colonized it. Where is it on the map? Um, it's like, it's like uh, you guys can't see this right now because obviously we've got the book that we're looking at. Yeah, we, we've started rebuilding that. That's going to take a long time before Summer Hall is anything usable at all. So that's going to take some time. But again, it is, it is more of a, a long-term contingency plan. So we can almost cross that one off. Then we've got what secrets hidden in Citadel Old Town. Well, we know what secrets are there. Unfortunately, we've died every single time we've tried to grab the damn things. This character, things are going to be different. Things have changed around here, and we're gonna, we're, we are a small boy, so maybe we'd be more sneaky at stealing the books. Not entirely sure. C, go on a dragon tour. As with every other character that's owned a dragon egg ever, we're going to have to go on a dragon tour to be able to hatch that dragon egg. Difference is, now I know where all the dragon egg sites are, so we've got that to look forward to as well. Then we've got and or. If you, if you direct, dirt your eyes to page two of what I've written, of what Boris has written over on, <laughs> over on page two, we've got and slash or. Stormlands Power Grab. Now, like I said, ideally we'd like both of these, but if not, this second plan is probably going to be the most reliable one. So, part A, pass laws to enforce title claims. We've already done that. That was that was our last character's. That was his life work. Hail to Randon's life work was overthrowing the tyrannical laws put in place to prevent us seizing a whole bunch of power. So, that is already dealt with. So, that one is clearly crossed off there. I don't know why he'd write it down if he was going to cross it off straight away. That doesn't make sense in hindsight. B, invite claimants slash find claims on titles. Very straightforward. The issue is, and I've also written at the bottom there another, uh, Boris has written at the bottom there another issue with uh, marrying for alliances. It, it's all because of the same problem here. We are a different religion to everyone else in Westeros. People hate us. They won't arrange uh, alliances. They won't come to court so that we can push their claims. Nothing like that is going to be possible, unfortunately. So that's a sort of tentative one. Flying claims on titles is obviously a lot easier. We can just <clears throat> acquire claims. Uh, either that or we could become ruthless, ambitious, at which point we can just go for border disputes for like 250 prestige to go. Which is fine, that's a bit more doable. C, press claims. Understandable. Have a nice day. Then under the other section, I've written Marrying for Alliances. This was actually put up in the comment section last episode, which is why I wanted to talk about it very briefly. So, in terms of Marrying for Alliances, as I said before, it's going to be very difficult because we are a foreign culture. Doesn't mean it's impossible. Well, Marrying for Alliances, all claims, I should, I should uh, put a little caveat onto that with. So, we could do both. However, people do not like us. None of the High Lords of Westeros like us because we're a different religion. We've in implemented a bunch of different religion cultures uh, and, and sort of turned the Stormlands into a heretic stronghold, right? If we try and arrange marriage with, say, the Martells, they are always going to say no no matter what because we are a horrible infidel. Even if we were to marry, I don't know, this random girl who is completely nobody, just a very, some, some high-born random girl there, they're obviously going to say no because they will not consider offer from infidels. What we will have to do is find somebody who is a claimant already. So let's go to the Reach. There's probably a bunch of claimants on the Reach. Then we find somebody who's willing to join our court, who's unlanded, who's kind of young enough to get her over to our court, have a child with her, then push her claim. That could work. That, or, or, yeah, yeah. Bring her to court, have a child with her, push her claim so that when she dies, the child inherits. That's a possibility. That's something that we could definitely work with. It's obviously risky, and it's also more or less going to be impossible anyway, because there's going to be so few people who actually have that claim. And that's also not taking into account the base game mechanic of characters with claims being frequently restricted from leaving courts, because they'll say, oh no, this character is a claimant, they can't leave, or, you know, other such reasons. Anyway, we've got a lot of work to do, we've got a lot of things to get out for us, but a lot of that is going to be education and making sure this kid ends up being good, because we've played kind of two characters back to back there, Boris the First and Paramount Hale. Both were very mediocre characters. This guy didn't have a single stat above... 
10 there, as you can see. Boris got better towards it. Oh, sorry, Hale got better towards the end of his life with all the tournaments we sent him to and the, the sort of studies that he undertook. His focus is not with any societies or anything. So he got better later in life. We've got to focus on not letting this happen again. I, I can't play another garbage character because it makes it's making an already difficult campaign. So we've got those those malices from, of course, the bloodlines, from having the different religions, etc., etc. We've got people hate us already. We don't need to make life any harder for this poor kid. Storms and becomes gods of the storm. Oh my god, it's massive. Okay, Boris II, already in his four years of life, has done way more than Hail of the Stormlands. No way, that might be our first conversion. Gods of the Storm, there it is. Holy shit. Um, there is this one as well, Thornton, Gods of the Storm, which was converted by Damon of, of Summerfield there, or maybe his father or whatever. Um, yeah, it would have been his father, Edwin of Summerfield there of Halsall. They also managed to convert them. That's two promises that we've actually got in the Stormlands now that are Storm Gods. Insane. Okay, thank you, Priest Gallard. I will send you a gift for your good service. I think he definitely deserves that. Um, you can also make him a court gesture, but I feel like that's sort of taking things away. Oh, God, here we go. The recent conversion of Storm's End to the Gods of the Storm has caused great unrest in the unfaithful parts of your realm. Both noble and peasant alike feel threatened. Wow, so this is basically almost like mirroring in, in obviously, the books in the show when Stannis be became a R'hllor worshipper. Uh, and, and that pissed off all of his peasants, and obviously Davos Seaworth and all of the nobles, and that's why he had to put them all to the torch. We're not going to do that, because unlike Stannis, who had just a single island, we've got the whole of the Stormlands to contend with. And we're not already, you know, a claimant to the Iron Throne or a traitor to the realm, so we've, we've got a lot of other stuff to consider. News has reached the court that a claimant to my tells Ismane is hiring men. Is that not the same woman from last time? Oh, God, we we've got to wipe out House Wensington here. This is ridiculous. Oh, there's so many of them as well. Um, so she, I believe, all, always gets a claim because she, yeah, she's a descendant from Boris, uh, Boris Baratheon, Oris Baratheon, um, and you can sort of see that they've got the, they've got the stag and whatnot. That's really, really annoying. Okay, um, we can, we can't obviously can't do anything against her right now because we're a tiny child. We've just gonna kind of wait for it to happen, huh? Let's just hope we've got enough troops. We should really be in that case. Oh, I want the Mace to training children, but I believe we can't train until we're like six or seven anyway. So for now, then, we might as well train up some troops, see if we can get levy reinforcements in the capital, something like that. Anything to really help with this war that we've got coming up. You're overseeing the construction in Summer Hall, so we can't really change much about that one, unfortunately. Um, proof defenses gives a minor fort level. Pacify province gives a levy size reinforcement. Okay. Oh, wow. And it also has the possibility of converting religion. Weird. I might get him to do that. What's Oversea Realm doing? It's just improving our domain. So that's uh, sort of the equivalent of um, just in the base game whereby you improve your domain, obviously, with, with the Oversea Realm button. Um, what is it called? It's Administer Holdings, isn't it, the base game? Those seem very much the same thing. So what else can it do? Small folk. Po oh, it's just generically everything there. Look at that. Tithe collected, plot uncovered. It's just the all-round sort of counselor. Cool. I kind of wanted to do this one then. Let's stick with that and get him actually working on the levy size as well. The guards drag Jerry and Penrose up from his cell and throw to your feet. I've come for justice by right of birth and blood. I demand trial by combat. Dale Penrose will be his champion. 60. Um, is he worth just... I was going to say ransoming out, but apparently not. Okay. You have that right. I will select someone to stand for him. So we've got 110 or we've got 35. We could send, like, Donald Picklejuice here to go to his death. But no, we will send Ronit of Whitecliffs. Who's going to absolutely annihilate him? Ronit the Bold. Thank you. He's got Duelist. He's a skilled fighter. He's strong. He's got... Brilliant commander, defender, direct leader. He, this is a martial madman. Good work. Beating him into submission and forcing him to yield. The Storm God has cast their judgment and Jerion is guilty. The council must decide his fate. Now, this is unfortunate because we are on a regency. Even though normally we'd be able to banish him or ex execute him or whatever. Because, again, regency, the council have to deal with that on our behalf. It does kind of suck a little bit. Because it would be nice to have control over the banishment or the ransoms if, if that was possible. The council just might straight up say no. Which is keeping money out of our pocket at the end of the day. It also means they're going for like righteous imprisonments. Pointless. Plus the council are not up for it either. Holy shit. Yeah. I, this is going to be fairly slow to start off with. But I will try and blitz through his, his growing up as soon as possible. You know what? That was a very quick turnaround. Thank you. Ronit of Storm's Endgame's levy reinforcements. I guess inspired by his recent battle. Uh, he's managed to bring in some troops to help us fight off. Who, who was it again? Uh... It's, she's gone to Bravo, so she's just going on a world tour now, trying to obviously get troops. This is kind of annoying. This is this is very much kind of annoying. Faith of Seven... Oh, shit, Tudbury Hall. Where is that? I've risen up in Tudbury Hall, led by a militant septum. Uh, can we not help out with that? It's just a revolt against Donald specifically. Offer to join war. Yes. 
We cannot join our vassals wars. Okay, if he loses, that could be a, a real, real concern. Oh, shit. Um, I guess maybe we could be like repressing, suppressing revolts or something. Oh, God. Yeah, no, this is, this is horrible. Oh, man. Pick, pick the old one out, huh? Um, right, we need to be then suppressing revolts. Now that he's got that levy reinforcement rate, that's just like a permanent little, little bonus. Or, not really permanent, but, but semi-permanent bonus there. So we don't have to worry about reassigning him or anything like that. Um, 18th, 5th moon, we're going to switch this guy over to help stop the round falling apart. Because that would be kind of horrible that we've got to such a great position whereby we can start grabbing claims. We can start expanding aggressively again, only to lose it all because we're a child. You know, kind of a, a little bit shitty there, game. Alright, so what's got the highest revolt risk? 13%, 12%, 19% there in Hadlow Keep. Oh my god. Um, yep, everything, everything's going horribly. 19.5% in Tarth. The other downside to obviously a revolt happening in Tarth is that it's over a straight crossing. So we'd have to send troops over that straight and we'd probably get annihilated. So let's suppress revolts over there then. Try and deal with that a little bit. Oh god. Um, does Pacified Province also lower revolt risk? It does, but not by much. However, I think it's better to potentially... Oh, we can only do that in our own provinces, right. Uh... Let's just have him overseeing the realm again. Can we do anything else to lower revolt risk here? I'm going to assume not. I don't really know what changes the... Oh, you know what? Perform charity is a good idea. Okay. Um, well, and that was 19%. Let's go and have you perform charity in Hadlow Keep. Oh, man. We can't because, of course, it's our priest. Okay, fine. We'll just keep proselytizing then. Onwards to the next one. That's a great idea. I can't... I've risen up in Rain House. Oh, shit. There's nothing I can do to stop this either. Oh, we've just got to hope that our, our lords are good enough to uh, to stop this by their own accord here. No, it's 37% in favor of Septim Lionel. Oh, God. And who was the other one again? It was... Uh, I thought it was Hadlow Keep, right? The, the rebellion? Was it you? Dickon? Uh, nope. It was you then? I have no idea. Oh, it was this guy. No? He must have beaten it. Okay, that's fine. Well, that's one dealt with. Um, and then we just sort of panic in regards to this one then. During its long period of abandonment, the roads around Summer Hall have become virtually unusable. Where paving still survives, it's cracked and broken, and many places of the road have been reclaimed by the land, becoming overgown and unpassable. I would give the stewards gold to rebuild them, 75 gold, thank you very much. That's fairly annoying, seeing as we kind of wanted that to maybe hire mercenaries, especially seeing as the round's falling apart as it is. There are a couple of events that we're going to have like that, where a Summer Hall is, is going to cost a lot of money, not only from the tax upkeep from rebuilding the goddamn thing, or specifically the tax malice from it being a colony, so it doesn't actually give any taxes. Um, but also, we've got to have a lot of maintenance events like that, where we have to chuck more gold at it, so it's kind of annoying. Um, he wants to go to the Sistel and study for a link. Absolutely. Off you go. He's going to give us 3.7 gold as compensation for him not being at court. Oh, God. My lord, I humbly ask you to intervene on behalf of the aggression against Septon and Lionel so they can ask us to step in and stop them. Uh, hopefully the council say yes. They vote against it. Why? That doesn't make any sense. Stormlander. 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 Why in this scenario would it make sense that they vote no to stopping a foreign or, or a, a religious uprising that's trying to exterminate their religion? This is absurd. Game CK2. You need to seriously take a look in the mirror, because this is nuts. Court position, obviously, we've got to wait for him to come back. Okay, well, I guess there's nothing I can do here, but so I just sit and wait for that to turn to faith of the Seven. So all that hard work is starting to disappear already. Fantastic. I made it to the servants' quarters, but I got very wet. Then we had a good time, and they felt sorry for me having to go out in the cold. Gain two diplomacy. Oh, nice. Well, that was very good. Gain the trait vomiting. I don't think going out in the cold makes you vomit, but that might just be me. Um, he's coming out okay. Six years old, I mean... Where did that diplomacy just go? Oh, because he's vomiting his minus two. Okay, that's fair enough. Boris Durandum, the tournament of Harrenhal. Uh, oh, no, that's House Frey, isn't it? House Frey generally sometimes control Harrenhal. That's why I'm getting confused. All right, then. Um, I will attend. It shall be entertained. Don't they start with Harrenhal in one of the dates? I don't really remember. Um, sure, we'll attend a tournament. Even though we have food poisoning. Oh, the servants invited us to eat cake, and then we had food poisoning. That seems very suspect. Who's our heir? It's Master Monsoon of Silversword, this garbage man. Okay, we're fine. Nothing to worry about. I don't, I don't think we have to worry about this guy dropping down at any time soon. Should be good. I don't know if a child can also get any bonuses from, obviously, going to Joust. You can get, you know, Intrigue or Martial or Diplomacy advice. I don't think a six-year-old boy can do that. Okay, good choice. Now, we, I guess we'll find out in a second, huh? Throw back in the dungeon. Uh, it's ended. No, that was it. Well, now, what happened? Oh, so now we've got Lord Gowan of Rainwood. He's overthrown him. Stormlander. Oh, for fuck's sake. Um... Just send him an insult, huh? That's really funny. God damn it. Okay, well, again, we can't do anything while we're a... What was that? Oh, it was a console. While we're a tiny boy, we can't do anything about that. So, 
Fingers crossed, hopefully not too much falls apart over the course of the next sort of 10 years or so. Excellent. After many months of rebuilding, the ruins of Summer Hall are finally resembling a habitable place once more. Many immigrants have been plugged to the where it means even a levy can be supported. Good. So that's what I was talking about before. Like, we can actually start getting some... I don't know if it's still taxes yet, um, but levy size is definitely, obviously, a great thing there. Um, so it's a small Stormliner castle, so it's, it's level 3. It could have been a lot, lot worse, and actually that's not bad for... I mean, for the price we paid, obviously, it's, it's not bad at all. In the Game of Thrones mod, upgrading the base holding. I've talked about this very briefly, but I don't know that I've talked about it too much in this this series. Uh, good. No, again, nothing we can do. Absolutely nothing we can do to stop this. So that's absolutely fantastic. We're going to have to try and stop all of that. Uh, is that... I mean, if so, Oh, God. They're actually going to stop that one, though. They actually put that one down. Oh, thank God. 100% uh, in favor of Ger Gerald... De thank you, Gerald DeYoung. And then we've got a Peasant Revolt as well. There's nothing I can do. Paramount Boris was killed try by heathens. Oh my god. We've got some serious religious issues then. Um, Kristen, welcome aboard. Uh, we, well, apparently our priest never came back. Lionel, welcome aboard. Uh, don't ask what happened to the last guy that you were replacing. Right, get over there to Griffin's Roost. Oh man. The, the, the conversion's a lot harder these days, huh? Let's go for... Can we send for a new maester? We just left and never turned back. He, he never came back. That's ridiculous. Well, there we go. Master Jorah. Thank you. He is a linguist. He is a maester as well. Was our maester not a guardian? Oh, no, it's this one. Yeah, she's very good. We'll, we'll, we'll absolutely stick with her. She's got enough hobbies. Falconer, poet, gardener. Well, she's a great character, so I'm more than happy to have her just continue to be our educator for a while. So the thing I wanted to talk about but didn't really mention too much is, is in this, there's obviously the sort of stacking uh, fortress bonuses. So you, you start with the small Stormlander Keep. In fact, I believe you start with nothing. You have to build the Stormlander Keep to start off with. And then you get large, small, common, large, huge, uh, naturally. However, it's not like the base game where you just click a button and then it builds it, right? So the way it works is you invest a pretty hefty amount of gold into upgrading the holding. I believe it's on the right. You right click on a province that can be upgraded. Yeah, there you go. So you right click on that. Storm's Drum. You can see that's a large storm line to keep. We right click, we click upgrade. That will then begin to move it up to small storm line to keep, which will give you whatever bonuses you've got there, you can see. However, it's not just a case of waiting with time. You have to send your Castellan here to improve holding. As you can see, it's only 3.85% yearly. Now, this guy's not the greatest Castellan in the world. It's certainly not bad by any stretch of the imagination. But it's a very, very low chance for that to be upgraded. You, I believe you can also send like this guy to oversee construction. That can also help out a little bit as well. I'm not entirely sure. The trade route for Storm's End is in dire need of new... Oh, good. Uh, we can't really afford it. But, I mean, will it pay for itself? Uh, let me crunch the numbers very quickly here. It's really not worth it, uh, now that I'm running the numbers on here. So, so our total... So, the trade route only affects the county of Storm's End. As you can see there, the yearly tax paid to us from Storm's End is 49.2 gold. This adds another roughly... Let's, let's say 25% for argument's sake, even though that's not true at all. Uh, adds another 25% onto the taxes. So, realistically, you're asking us to go down to what would be about 40 gold. But it would be almost exactly 40 gold, right? Because 25% of 40 is 10 pl plus it. Yeah. Anyway, look, the point is, it's it's going to be about 10 gold per year this trade route is giving us. They're asking us to spend 192 gold to keep it running. Am I right in thinking that that would then take 19 years to pay itself off? That's not a good deal. Hopefully my, my maths is right here and I'm, I'm understanding everything correctly. That just seems like garbage. No, that's too expensive. Obviously, that would be more, much more useful if you were in King's Landing, if you were in Pentos, Bravos, Mir, so, somewhere with an extensive trade route, somewhere where you're getting a shit ton of taxes rather than just this very meager amount that we're getting right now. Then it would be obviously much more valuable. But to us, it's not worth it. That would, Like I said, it was going to take about 19 years to pay for itself. If it's 10 gold a month that we're gaining from it, it's going to cost 192 it's, I would rather take, I think any economist would take the flat sum rather than waiting 10 years for that to pay out. Because that's insane. We might not even be here in 10 years time. I'm, I'm happy with, I'm happy with that decision. I know a lot of people in the past have said that that's a stupid decision. But hopefully you guys can sort of see why I've done that. Oh, now this is big. I woke up early and found a sealed letter addressed to Simona. I wonder what it could say. I should find out. It could be important. There we go. Okay, so we've now got Curious, which again can become Shrewd. If we get Shrewd, that's going to be a massive, massive bonus to our stats. He's also coming out a very rounded character right now. Not looking particularly great in any particular field. I mean, obviously, Diplomacy could be an argument, but it's it's only a point ahead of both Intrigue and Martial. So we could do anything with him. I'm going to wait till he's 12, and then we'll sort of decide. I'm not going to make a decision here and now that we should go for a big old Martial military leader or anything like that. We'll just sort of see what life throws at him. And we apparently have a Faith of the Seven Uprising. I didn't even notice it, to be honest with you. Well, it's not exactly going to take much to put this down, huh? 
Oh, we've got enough men just in the south of the Stormlands to deal with this by themselves there. Um, we've also got some vassals going to war here. I do need to keep a bit more of a closer eye on the, the sort of realms comings and goings because we have obviously way less of a, of a say in anything going on right now because we are that child. So we do have to kind of worry a little bit more about the behind the scenes stuff. Again, what about like plots and things like that? Do we have any control over... I'm, I'm almost kind of half tempted to auto stop plots. We can't imprison anybody right now and there may just be some plots that are causing more issues than... I want to keep the status quo, let's, let's put it that way, until we eventually are able to lead the Stormlands ourselves. So I'm, I'm going to want to stop plots. The only reason I had it off, not off of auto stop plots was so that we could kidnap people or, or imprison people and then ransom them back out. But obviously that's irrelevant right now because the counts are in full control of everything. It's time for me to receive a proper education. Life is so full of opportunities. What will I become? Okay then, it's time for your GOAT exam. What quality education would you like to purchase for yourself? Lord Paramount, Boris II, and Durandon. I would spend highly to get Lord Paramount, Boris II, Durandon. The best equipment possible, of course we will. Uh, it's only 86 gold, to be fair, so absolutely we're going to go for that one. Thank you very much. So how are we doing too much? Uh, we've got 55247. Five, Actually, not too bad at all. Obviously, learning is going to be skewed by us just buying the best thing possible. But yeah, diplomacy and martial seem like obviously the best ones to get. Intrigue would be kind of nice and the same with stewardship, but... I think everything that we've got to worry about coming up, especially judging by the plan that we've set out here, that Boris has set out here, um, I, I think that diplomacy and martial are going to be very, very handy. I think we're more or less forced down the... I think not get many childhood traits, huh? There was an opportunity to get willful, but I just declined it. Because uh, it's garbage. So, let's go for, I guess, diplomacy? I mean, he's already doing better than some other... Ooh, some whole got a master builder. Wow, that's not what we wanted, but okay, fair enough. In fact, that's completely wasted in summer hall. Thank you. We did also get uh, Paul Fighter there as well, so that's pretty good. Now, we have got the Marshal. He was originally uh, sort of building up uh, sort of levees, that type of thing, for the Adventurer threat, which has since disappeared. God knows what happened to her. She must have died. So I've got him back over training children. 15% chance yearly of him improving. What level is... So Ron at the Bold is only a level 3 skilled fighter. Now, you actually can't... If you are a level 4 fighter, you can't force your child to train anyway. So it is just random getting up to that master warrior, master fighter, whatever it's called, trait. So we've got, I mean, level 3, I'm going to assume then is now the highest we can get. Unless you need like a level 4 marshal for it. But I, I don't really know how it happens. I've only ever seen it happen just completely randomly. I thought it said Banish, daughter of Bololol, has arrived. Why is she in our court? Banish, daughter of Bololol? Yep, me too. Lord. Heathens attacked me when I tried to spread the word of the storm god. I barely escaped with my life and I'm now severely wounded. But luckily, he's strong and ruthless. This is the type of priest we all aspire to be, I think. Hopefully he can uh, get a bit more of religious conversion going on. We're kind of getting to that stage now where who really cares about revolts, right? We're almost at the stage where we can step in and, and try and stop things if they ask for it. Which they will if they're getting screwed by it. Uh, we've now ended up with another... Oh man, we've got two faith of seven vassals, huh? We've actually got a Faith of the Seven High Lord, which is horrible. We'll deal with him. That should be one of our first jobs when we when we take the uh, when when we take our throne rightfully. Uh, dealing with all of the religious uprisings and issues that we've had going on there would be kind of nice. So we do have rights imprisonment as per usual, but again, we can't really do much about that. What if we've got? Hang on. Uh, I'm sure they know what they're doing. Oh, great, hilarious. They've sacked the priest, and now we've got no valid candidates. You people are really nice and fun. Anders, welcome to court. He is ruthless, good, and gregarious. That's always a nice combination. Plus learning a 15. Uh, get out there. Get to Griffin's Roost. Those people are, are constantly causing issues, beating up my priests and getting them fired. Let's deal with that. Now, what was I talking about before I got rudely interrupted by the Storm Priest dying? What I was going to say is we should keep an eye on this stage at our imprisonments. We do have the Lord of Rainwood is possible to be imprisoned. If he says yes, we just chuck him in prison and then wait a few years. He's 63. He's only got to survive for three years. Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> I didn't actually want him to be imprisoned. Um, how many members of his house are there? His house stayed, Mon. So there are four living members. We could just try and kill them all. Uh, that's not a bad idea. Call him for trial. Uh, what if we throw him in the oubliette? Council said no. Whoops, that was a mistake. You know what? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure it was in hindsight. Um, I'm not used to having a bloody council. I'm just like working on muscle memory at this point. Call him for trial. Let's see what we can do. Try by combat. You fool. You absolute fool. You've basically signed your own death warrant. You have that right. I will select someone. Ronit of Whitecliffs. No one can kill Ronit. 55. He's like Arthur Barristan Selmy. Fight well, Ronit. Done. <laughs> He's been defeated. His plan has failed. The council decides your fate. The Senate will decide your fate. Uh, what, what do we do with him then? They released him. Are you actually fucking joking? 
He died in the dungeons immediately. Are you kidding me? Well, honestly, it could have been worse because we did want to wipe out his dynasty anyway. Um, three living members. We might as well just start the grand plot to remove them all from our realm, huh? Um, are you pretty annoyed at me now? Put my kin in the oubliette. Blood of the Storm King, Foreign Religion, Legion's Tyrant, minus 10. That's fine. That's not a worry because we'll, that, that tyranny will have disappeared, I'm sure, by the time we are back on the throne. Now, I am trying to sow dissent. Oh, my God. I thought I sent him to fabricate claims. And Chittering Brook. Well, I guess you might as well come home and perform statecraft instead. Oh, shit. I'm so annoyed by that. Oh, well. Let's try and wipe him out and then obviously re-inherit Brainwood, take it back, and then we can just give it out to a Stormguard Bass without him to cause revolts or any sort of plottings or risk, you know, dishonor or anything like that. I should have explained, by the way, that people are probably wondering why I've... Oh! Civil War, good. Why I threw... Oh, man. The Veil and the Reach have both been grabbing promises from the Iron Throne that I wanted to grab. Why I threw him in the Oubliette. And the simple answer for that is in an older version of Game of Thrones, I'm not sure if it's still true, you used to be able to, before you call people for trial, trip them in the oubliette, and that would give them a minus to their diplomacy, which meant during the trial, they would obviously be garbage at defending themselves, and you'd almost always manage to survive. Alana Baratheon has a claim on, of course, all of our titles, but more importantly is starting a venture plot against us, and her horrifying pirate of her husband, who died. Uh, my uncle died, right? Yeah. There he is, Master Son Monsoon of Silver Sword. Died of severe stress. He had gonorrhea and was stressed. And now his daughter, Brienne of Silver Sword, if she dies, we inherit it anyway. Oh my god, she's a genius. How has this happened? Um, She's a distant relative. Oh, she's our cousin. She's a genius, though. And she's also our religion. I, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. She's also three, so that might have been a horrible mistake. But let's go for it. I mean, how, how many opportunities are you going to get the chance to marry any geniuses? I mean, quite frequently, to be honest with you. That was probably a horrible idea. Um, we'll wait. We'll wait. She's a good backup for now, anyway. Well, that was quicker than I thought. We've got 13,000 men have already landed. God knows where they came. Oh, right. They dropped down over there. There's no wonder I didn't see them because we're also in a civil war. So we haven't got fog of war. Or, or more specifically, we've lost vision on these places because they're obviously separate rounds now. Luckily, we've got 17,000 men. So I'm not too concerned about this at all. And we've obviously got our incredible commander, Marshal. Get everybody together and let's take them out very, very quickly. This is going to be, I think, an easy war. Now, they should also be willing to offer us a pretty hefty ransom. Uh, Baldrick, what happened to... Uh, what happened to... Excuse me. What happened to... Oh, because he's obviously... Yeah, okay. Let's stop him training children and let him so he can lead troops for a bit. He's, he's way too important to not lead troops. Wait, is he a... What is that? Oh, because he's... Yeah, okay. I was like, hang on a minute. Is he a, a Baratheon or a Durandum? But no, he is just a, a servant of us, which is why he's not like a landed character or anything like that. Bonifer, uh replaced with Courtney. So we've got 18, 15, 15. Who's leading her troops? She is. Um, fine. She's going to get annihilated then. 17,000 versus 13,000. Let her siege that down. So they leave a little tiny bit of a garrison behind. Then we'll just move in and take them out. They fired our pre... Stop this nonsense. Fired our priest again. Shit's sake. There's no reason for it. They're just priests. What is wrong with you people? Right, there we go. Bormund and Bormund. If you can do me a favor and proselytize, that would be fantastic. All right. Now, again, we'll wait for those to finish. Let their garrison, you know, go, go, and, go and occupy that area. Then we'll move in. Bor Who was... Oh, it's a different Bormund. Okay, thank God. That was inbred Bormund and not the Bormund we just hired. The wars between the Great Powers of the Rams have subsided. There we go. Okay, so she left behind a garrison of 3,000 men. That was quite significant, huh? And now we move over. Wait, was that right? Did I read that right? No. It must have been the total garrison of the province. Okay. And then we're going to crush them. Oh, God, there's a river crossing. We're movement locked. Oh, dear. Well, it doesn't matter because we're still going to crush them either way because we outnumber them by a good 4,000 troops. And you are done for. Good war. Nice effort. Appreciate you trying. But, uh, unfortunately, these these are ours now. Thank you. We're, we're keeping them. I've decided I want to keep the Stormlands, actually. I know it might come as a shock. Uh, and then we'll chuck her in prison and ransom her out when we can afford it. Or we could execute her. She's a member of House Baratheon. 23 living members. They're like, they're like ants. They're just everywhere, all at once. They say, you know, that you're never more than six foot away from a Baratheon. I've had these special feelings for a special someone lately. The strange urges to find myself embraced or close to another person. We're going to have for the farmer's daughter. Uh, she wants 46 gold for a Baratheon. Fine. I mean, it's not as if killing one Baratheon off is going to stop anything else, because there are so many of the goddamn people. In fact, this is a nice amount of gold. Reason I'm trying to... a gain lossful. Please. Did we get it? We got shr... Wait, what? Oh! How long have we had that for? 
<laughs> I thought, hang on a minute, what, how do we get Shrewd from that event? I didn't even know that was possible. But no, we had Curious, didn't we? I wonder how long we've had that for, because I didn't even notice. To be fair, even with Shrewd, though, I'm going to put it out there, kind of garbage. Kind of garbage, but obviously much better than our previous character, who was utter garbage. So it is a step in the right direction. Ooh, Zealous would be good. Oh, that's good. I'm a big fan of that. Zealous and Shrewd. Okay. And then suddenly, he's decided to not be a fresh faced young boy and he's gone for full-on monster. All right. Let's put on some honorary titles. Wait, what, what the hell can we give away? Sworn Shield. Um, that's, that's not it, Chief. Nope. That's, that's incorrect. I don't know what you're talking about. I want to go outside. Lose one diplomacy. Oh, good. Oh, good. Remember when I was praising him for not being complete garbage? Gain the trait Brave. Oh my god, suddenly he's... Um, I'm impressed. Okay, he's still going to be not fantastic, but holy shit, hang on. Since the Force are at work, he's been attacked. Uh, let's go to a jousting tournament. This is what I wanted to do with this whole episode, was at least get a good character for us to start launching all of our goals and ambitions with. This guy seems incredible. This guy seems like... Oh, well, he's obviously not incredible at all, but he seems like there might be the character we've been waiting for for a very, very long time. All right, this should be good. I don't know whether or not 15 years old, like I said before, you could potentially get some bonuses. Uh, you know, learn about intrigue or martial diplomacy, whatever, from the tournament. I'm going to assume not. I think you have to be an adult for that. Um, she truly deserves it. Blackmail the Vassal will do nothing for now because we're just about to come of age, at which point we can have a feast or some garbage. It was a fine spectacle. And that, as they say, was that. How much longer until we are of age? Third of Tenth Moon, 8397. Four more months. I'm kind of annoyed that we didn't get any higher fighting trait, to be honest with you. Seeing as we've been almost, I mean, almost our entire lives had this great commander, this this great master at arms, training children constantly. No way, Summer Hall is finished. Stormlander, Gods of the Storm. Oh, wow. I mean, that wasn't particularly quick, but it was obviously very, very good. Put a castle town there. I'd rather put it in Storm's End and obviously keep booming this one up. What do we need? We need Modest Estates. Uh, for that, we need, what is it, like, guard stations, which is an upgrade for patrol posts. Yeah. We need to build this, then we need to build that, then we need to build Castletown. No, I'm saving my gold right now. That's why I've not been doing anything with it or sending out gifts or anything, so that we can go on a foreign tour and actually try and buff this character up even more beyond what, as, as good as he already is, or at least as acceptable as he already is. Send him to the wall. Goodbye. Man, I'm, I, again, I'm kind of annoyed that we only got poor fighter out of all that time that we had. Because I've basically his entire life, besides a very brief amount of time while we had adventurer threats. Grey Eminence is fantastic. A br brief amount of time while we had adventurer threats. That guy has been training children. Obviously, he didn't do a goddamn good job. I think we need to sack him. Um, scholarship. Let's focus on the early game. Let's focus on becoming the best character we can be as early as possible. Uh, I mean, what's good to go for here? We're all in a kingdom, so we need 700 gold. Possible. It's not impossible, but we are about to go on a foreign tour, so let's not worry about that. Let's go for, like, uh... Wow, these are all kind of shit. Um... Be known as the Holy. Proof combat ability. That's an incredible idea. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. Sort of deals with the complaint I had before. Build an observatory immediately. Then if we could join the... Ah, oh, she can be ransomed out now. Fantastic news. Uh, easy excommunicated. Not really a big deal to us. If we can get into either the citadel or the or the alchemist guild i'm fine with either ideally i prefer the citadel starting off at the age of 16 getting all those chains this is going to be big i think this is going to be a huge adventure for our guy he's clearly got something good going on for him he's, he's clearly got a, a decent head on his shoulders so hopefully he'll do well in the citadel that guy is dead now we've got Kristen swan which i'm not too concerned about how are house of elaine doing eight living members they're actually doing okay um so she's doing fine i assume they're all married off matrilineally she is at least uh, Jalico, he has a son, Horono, let's arrange betrothal between him and, arrange marriage, sorry, between him and, and anybody that's capable, nope, there's nobody, uh, Rainus, we need to arrange off betrothal matrilineally to Derwald, he, he would do, no, not consider offer from infidels, oh, because they're Valyrian, right, okay, uh, you're on your own in that case then, pal, honestly, that's, that's your own problem, deal with it on your own time, I mean, they're doing okay, We'll just keep a close eye on things and make sure they don't completely disappear from uh, from the line of the living. So I want to give them Summer Hall at some stage too. As it is a... <sighs> Good. <laughs> I think I think that's enough. I don't think I can afford to lose any more chancellors and, and keep, my, uh, keep my blood pressure in line. 
Thank you all for watching. This has been a great episode for House Durand. We've managed to keep the round together. We've finished building Summer Hall. We've actually turned into a half-decent character. Brave, zealous, shrewd. Ignore the tyrant. That's not relevant. Gremnitz, of course, is very, very good. 15 diplomacy. Fairly impressive. He's definitely leaps and bounds above the previous past two characters we played as well. Then, of course, we've got our sort of usual garbage. Oh, we need to equip Krakenfire. There we go. Slight little bit of bonus there. And again, he's 16. So we can pick the Citadel. If we go to the Citadel and stick with it, we can get a chain in absolutely everything and pick whatever specialization we goddamn feel like. And hopefully, it might also give us a bonus on stealing some books. I don't think it will. But there may be some, some game mechanic I've not considered that might play into that as well. Maybe in the same province. I don't know. Anyway. Let's give a shout out to all of the people who've made the series and the channel possible in the first place. A big thank you to Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Banyul, Sudini, Conspiety, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Danny Good, Donald, Eric B, Escape, Facunda Vasquez, Fungus King, Harik, Haydog, Jimbo, Josh Landine, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Michael Mullen, Necrofilm, Pelvis Presley, Seth All the Swede, Toby Cruz, Tom Terry 18, Vacuous Backus, and Zazzy7011. Thank you all for your support. Insane Lovers on Patreon. Thanks for keeping the channel going. It is much appreciated. Hope you guys are still enjoying a little bit of Game of Thrones here. We've got still a fair amount of way to go. I'd, I'd say we're probably about halfway through this campaign right now. I think, I think we're doing a goddamn good job, all things considered. And you know who else is doing a goddamn good job? That's right, it's the other patrons. Thank you as well to Astro, Adam Person, Andrew Wilson, Betamus Max, Sedini, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Dung Honey 2 and 7, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Faulkner, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, GDWK Run, Genji Zerker, Gray, Haji Damar, Hancock, Harry McGowan, Icy the Great. Israel, Jay Lehrer, James Barnes, Jordan DeVries, John Holiday, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beard, Justin Plock, Justin Walters, Luana Thomas, Matthew, Nathan Flores, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Nixie, Pan Samu, Panther Pearl, Smirt Worm, Dean St. Pickle, Venom Meow, Will Wade, Wolfie, and Zico. Thank you all for your support as well.